Howdy everyone. Have you ever run into this issue when attempting to play one of your discs? Yep, that's the dreaded U1 error. Now thankfully, it's a pretty simple fix, which I have picked up from console five as a loading belt. Uh, in this case, the VEB 1184. And on the inside of this machine is a worn out belt that is preventing the disc from spinning up 100% of the time. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You end up just having to try it over and over again. But I'm gonna go ahead and open this player up and replace this belt and then we should have nice, solid, smooth operation. So as you can see, the first thing I've done is to eject the tray before unplugging the unit. So this will stay out and make it easier for me to access the loading belt. Flip it around here, you can see that I've removed two screws on the side, as well as on this side. And then on the back, I've removed these marked screws here, here, and here. And then on this box, I've removed this screw and finally this screw. And placed everything in this magnetic tray to my right, which is really convenient when you're doing electronics projects. As you can see, this is the CLD D406. It is from April of 1997, and I really like it because it has both AC3RF out and digital optical, as well as stereo analog and composite. I can take that little piece off to expose. This is the laser track that helps it flip from side to side because this is a dual-sided player. And once I have that, I can now take off the top. And what you will see is that right in here is the belt that I need to replace. And it is what helps load this tray in and out. And it, if it gets a little worn, then it can make it so that the tray doesn't quite sit properly when it goes in and the disc won't, the mounting clips won't work quite right to get everything going. Uh, but so I'm gonna get a different camera angle here to show you the rest of this process. All right, so now I'm gonna show you is that it's very easy to remove this loading tray because there's only two plastic clips holding the entire thing in place. And one of them is right here and the other one is right here. So all you have to do is push this in just a little bit to get past the catch. And then you take your fingers, you're gonna push that one in, take your other finger and push that one in, and then just move it past the little catch, and voila, it's out. And now, what I can show you is that right in here, this white disc right here is what has our loading belt on it. It's a little hard to see, but I'm touching the belt Right here, it goes around this little smaller wheel here. Um, so at this point, I can actually remove this and pop in the new one here. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little screwdriver, actually I'll probably just use a smaller one. Just like so, a little flathead. And I'm going to take this and I'm just gonna gently bend it out of the way and get it over the top of this wheel and ta-da! There is the old belt. This is now 23 years old um, and just to compare, I'll show you the new one. Here we go. I don't know if this is terribly obvious but uh, what I can see is that this belt has a lot of kind of sideways torque on it, um, so it's not perfectly flat anymore. Whereas this new one is nice and straight. 
So I'm going to hook this around the larger disc here. If you can see my yellow, it's this white wheel here going down to this little yellow wheel or white wheel here. So I can just use my fingers and I'm going to hook it around the big one and making sure to keep it straight. You don't want it to get twisted. And I'm going to take my screwdriver and just gently pull it around the littler wheel. There we go. Oh, it's a little twisted. I'm just going to try and... There we go. Okay, that's why it's nice to have this little screwdriver. And I'm just kind of turning it by hand at the moment just to make sure everything looks nice and smooth. Okay, so with that, I'm going to take my tray and I'm just going to line it back up. There we go. And you can just gently push it back in. Oop. I think I've got it a little cockeyed. Voila. And now you can see it just pushes in and out real easy. So now I'm going to reassemble and we're going to test it out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gently push this tray back in just so that it doesn't get in my way and I don't run the risk of accidentally snapping it off or anything. Then I can take our top piece here and close that up. It slides in from the back like so. All right, and then get our black side screws in. On this side. And there's that. Okay, and then of course on the back, we have our little cover here for the laser track. It's got these things here that just pop into the side, right like so. Then we're gonna take the little screws for the sides of that first. That. And there's another one. These are all the same, same screws on the back, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. And then you just look for the little arrows. There's one. Oh. and three, and that is the last screw. Okay, we are reassembled and solid and ready to test this bad boy out. I've got it just sitting back on my shelf now and I'm going to take the power cable back here and just gently plug this in and see how we do. Go. Okay, see the light comes on, that's good. And I'm going to push this back straight on. You can see it automatically closed it. That's great, all right. Opening. Popping in, closing. And Go. Great. Now, of course, since this is an intermittent problem, I won't know right away whether um, I fully fixed the issue, but hopefully as I play more discs, um, I won't run into that U1 error anymore. So that was it. Thank you for watching, and I hope I will have some more videos about the insides of these things soon as I play with things like uh, calibrating using the Pioneer test disc 
and attempting maybe some simple mods on the system. All right, thanks everybody.